I'm Paul Bloom. I'm a professor of psychology at Yale University, and I study various aspects of human nature. And I write books on different topics connected to what I'm interested in. And I just finished a book called Against Empathy. And when people hear I'm against empathy, they kind of freak out sometimes. It sounds like being against kittens or against world peace. And I've come to learn that part of it is because people use the term empathy in different ways. So sometimes people think of empathy in terms of everything good, kindness, morality, uh, wanting to make the world a better place, and I'm not against that. Other people use the term empathy to uh, talk about something more focused, understanding other people, knowing what's going on in other people's heads. That's really interesting. And I think that this is actually neither good nor bad. If you're a good person, you want to know what other, what's in other people's heads so you can help them make the world a better place. If you're a bad person, that sort of empathy is very useful if you want to seduce or exploit or bully. In any case, that's not the sort of empathy I'm interested in either. What I'm really interested in is putting yourself in another person's shoes and feeling what they feel. And a lot of people, a lot of smart, uh, concerned, good people think that this is central to morality. Um, and it's not crazy. When you put yourself in somebody's shoes, when you feel empathy for them, you are motivated to help them. You do direct your help towards them. And in a very simple situation, just you and one other person, empathy's fine. But I think empathy, more generally, is a disaster in this complicated and interesting world. We, um, it has several problems. It's biased. Uh, we feel more empathy for people who look like us who share our skin color, our ethnicity, who are attractive rather than ugly, who are close rather than far. It's innumerate. We feel empathy for the one, but not for the hundred. And, you know, one way to think about it is because of empathy, we're more interested, more concerned about a little girl stuck in a well than we are about a crisis like climate change. And it can be weaponized. So unscrupulous politicians uh, of all sorts use our empathy for suffering victims to catalyze anger and hatred against other groups. Adam Smith in the, in the 1700s observed that when you feel empathy for a victim, it makes you angry for those who cause that person suffering. And so a lot of the rhetoric, in fact, recent rhetoric in America against uh, immigrants, against Muslims, uh, involved the use of empathy about people who are said to be the victims of these groups to, to generate anger towards these groups. So I think empathy is really poor moral guide. Um, and, well, some people say, well, what's the alternative? How else could we be good? And there's, you know, the subtitle of my book, The Case for Rational Compassion. We could be rational in that we decide the right thing to do by appealing to moral principles, by thinking in terms of costs and benefits. And we could also be compassionate. That is, we can care about people, want to make their lives better without putting ourselves in their shoes. And there's actually a lot of evidence, some neuroscience studies, some uh, psychological studies finding that we're, we're better people, we're more likely to help, we're better at helping when we, uh, when we care about others, but not necessarily feel empathy for them. Now, I'm not against empathy in general. I'm against empathy as a moral guide. Uh, I think empathy is a valuable part of intimate relationships. It's a great source of pleasure. Uh, the pleasure of a book or a movie or a TV show is largely lies in feeling empathy for fictional characters. A world without empathy would be immensely impoverished. But when it comes to thinking about the right thing to do, um, and when it comes to being motivated to do the right thing, there are much better alternatives. We are better off without empathy.